and sorry for being late, but anyway, uh, I think I'm just in time. So uh, this is an important question, and I think that we have a success story regarding uh, how we did uh, over the last few years and how we are planning for the coming years. Uh, energy security is very important, as we all know, and therefore I think that uh, we have uh, the right, uh, I would say, the right structure between the uh, upstream side together with uh, the uh, players, the companies, uh, the partners, and with the infrastructure that we have uh, over the years. Uh, with that, I think, with the collaboration that we had recently with our neighboring countries, we were able as well to uh, do uh, several things. First of all is to develop the uh, resources that we have, whether the existing ones in order to add more or the stranded ones. Number two is to add on more of uh, international energy companies. And we have been able to attract uh, more and more. And therefore, you could see that all or most of whether the global companies or regional companies are uh, uh, doing business in Egypt. Uh, then we talk about the infrastructure, as I said, uh, very well established infrastructure. And uh, the idea now is how we did, uh, like uh, His Excellency Minister Fayad was saying, with the uh, price reforms. And this was part of the subsidy reforms. We have taken uh, an important step uh, years back and uh, we have established some good uh, what we call the fuel indexation system for uh, pump price and uh, we were able then to uh, put ways into from one side uh, rationalization of consumption but from the other side as well giving us the breath to work on transition. And this is by focusing more on the gas that we were talking earlier about the production, about more uh, companies and players in the market where they can help us for the entire value chain, upstream, midstream, and downstream. And therefore, there is a stake for everyone. When we talk about downstream, here we talk about petrochemicals, fertilizers, we talk about gas, uh, hold uh, for uh, uh, holes, uh, house uh, connections uh, instead of the LPG that is mostly imported and uh, as well subsidized. Uh, then we converted more of our uh, vehicles over the last few years to, uh, to operate on CNG. All that is well and how we have been optimizing the usage of our natural gas. But at the same time, the strategy that we developed back in 2016 was targeting to have in our uh, energy mix the proper uh, mix of renewable by uh, having that uh, into our um, portfolio to reach a number of 42 percent in the year 35. Now we are trying to accelerate it to have it in the year 30 as we are currently updating our strategy in order to include new energies and new clean fuels like hydrogen. And this is something that was not there back in 2016. And therefore, uh, uh, recently we are uh, concluding our updated uh, strategy. Meanwhile, we have issued our uh, hydrogen strategy and we have also, uh, I would say, founded an important governance model in order to have a, uh, a council, I would say a national council, to uh, manage the investments and to manage and to lead the uh, strategy of the uh, green hydrogen. So I think that we are trying to, from one side, to optimize the uh, extraction development and utilization of our natural resources, whether it is uh, oil and gas, uh, oil or gas, with a decarbonized and more responsible manner, 
at the same time accelerating towards uh, more of renewable. Mm. As we know, we are blessed with m m full of sun and of air and wind where we can uh, maximize our renewable uh, content in our mix together with developing what we were talking about regarding hydrogen. So I think this is a, a proper uh, scheme where uh, with the stability and the security uh, of the market here, I think that this is one of the uh, most attractive segments in Egypt. Yeah, and I want to congratulate you both actually because price reform is, is definitely one of the most challenging politically uh, action you can do, but it has such a wonderful impact on decarbonization. So sure. congratulations again. Um, Alexandra, um, the minister spoke about the combination of natural gas and renewable. That's something you are extremely familiar with. Could you take us a little bit to Greece's strategy on, on both those topics? Yeah, thank you, Eleanor. I think that the recipe is um, vision and uh, seeing the future, vision and ambition, and at the same time, pragmatism and realism. And um, uh, I know it's hard to find the balance uh, between those two. You need, obviously, vision and ambition to push forward with the energy transition and all the, the challenging issues that we all countries face. But at the same time, uh, we must be realistic and uh, see the present, see that we need somehow to meet our energy needs. And this is why we need to continue uh, base ourselves on a, on a natural gas as a transit fuel. So, uh, having this in mind, this is what uh, Greece is currently uh, doing. Um, just for you to let you know, uh, Greece, back in 2019, we took a very bold decision to uh, take away from uh, uh, fossil fuels. We were a country that was heavily dependent on uh, coal, lignite, so we decided to phase out from uh, fossil fuels and shut down uh, our lignite plants. And obviously, one of the top priorities in Greece is to, to expand and accelerate uh, the pace of renewables uh, uh, penetration uh, into our electricity uh, generation mix. This is a top uh, priority uh, for Greece. And this is a need... From 50% from to 80%, correct? Correct. Uh, actually, yes, we have managed in uh, four years to double uh, our installed capacity in renewables, so yes. now reaching yes. more than 50% uh, renewables coming uh, from uh, uh, renewables that is needed for electricity production, and the target is to go to 80% uh, by 2030. Uh, I'm uh, quite confident that we will get there, and we will get there sooner than uh, 2030. This is a need, Eleanor, uh, obviously to meet the climate uh, uh, challenges uh, we face, so it's an existential need uh, for all countries, but for Greece it's also uh, a need for uh, energy security uh, reasons, because uh, we need to get uh, less dependent from uh, Russian uh, natural gas. Uh, but you asked me, how this can be combined with, uh, with the other pragmatism, which is uh, how to face the reality and how you meet uh, the current needs. Uh, we don't believe in Greece that it's contradictory to uh, deal at the same time with uh, becoming a, a regional natural gas hub, and this is one of the main priorities uh, as well for Greece. And why not become a natural gas producer? Uh, we have uh, started, commenced again these efforts some uh, years ago, and uh, hopefully I don't want to say uh, many things about that and not to cultivate uh, over expectations, but. Um, we are in, uh, in an exploration phase and hopefully if we have some uh, positive uh, outcomes, why not? We would aspire to become also uh, a natural gas producer. Um, finally, what I want to say and comment is that uh, we are on track, yes, to meet uh, these goals, uh, but 
we can, despite the political will, and I'm sure that all of us, uh, all political leadership have demonstrated this political uh, will to, to push forward with the energy transition, we cannot go beyond on what the technology gives us today. So if you don't have deployed technology and innovation in order to meet uh, these targets, the climate targets, um, I think we will find ourselves in a gap, uh, in a gap between uh, uh, the need, yes, to move forward, but uh, the reality. Uh, so given that we cannot predict how long we need to meet the uh, energy transition goals, um, it's imperative for the countries to keep on uh, building on uh, synergies uh, with neighboring countries, and this is what Greece is doing. Uh, and so I think that's that's actually a, a fantastic segue into Osama. That's Osama, <laughs> yes. This <laughs> is something definitely that knows how to build synergies we, between. We, we discuss a lot within the <laughs> EMGF uh, yeah. uh, gas forum. So uh, yes, for Greece, I think um, having facing this multifaceted um, yeah. a strategy of uh, pushing forward, doing uh, more, having the green agenda yeah. as a priority, but at the same time. Uh, uh, stick to the current needs, um, use natural gas, use the infrastructure we are building in Greece, I think uh, remains a, a priority. Perfect. Well, that, that leads us then to Osama. You were extremely present as EMGF at uh, COP27 and, and COP28. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the contribution that you've made. Thank you, Eleanor. Thank you very much. So I think the ministers talked a lot about energy security and also touched upon energy uh, transition and climate action. And they talked also about the balance, the need to balance between both of them. And I think this is one of our priorities and our objectives at DMGF. How can we strike the right balance between energy security and energy transition? And as also as discussed by the ministers, natural gas is and will play a significant role in this regard. That's why we were keen to, yes, supply more gas, but how can we supply this gas in a more responsible way? And this is what we have been trying to do or what we have been uh, discussing over the past two years. And that's why we launched in COP27 during the decarbonization day, which Minister El Mulla full, takes full credit for having this for the first time in the COPs. We launched the EMGF initiative for decarbonization. We believe the technologies are there to make the gas even more cleaner. And during this initiative, we came up with two plans, an outline for a plan for projects for decarbonization, and also another plan, what are the policies and regulations that the governments need to adopt so that they can, can encourage investments in these projects. And also, when we were talking about this initiative, we tried to uh, do it in a marginal abatement cost curve. We don't have to wait uh, for years and years to do these projects. There are few things that we can do immediately, like methane abatement, like energy efficiency, like electrification of the facilities, and then along the way we can go to the more expensive, let's say, projects like CCS and CCUS. So this is what we're trying to do, and this is what of, one of the outcomes of the initiative that we had. Also, in this initiative, we identified five main roles for the MGF as an organization to support our member countries. One is the policy, harmonization of policies and regulations. One is about technology, uh, technology aggregation. Another one being more of a hub for knowledge and finance. And the fifth one is about carbon intensity certification. And in COP28, we presented the second phase of this initiative, which was mainly focusing on the two of these rules. One is we presented a harmonized or a framework for a harmonized policy and regulations for decarbonization. And the second, we, we presented a mechanism and a roadmap for carbon intensity certification for the East Mediterranean, where the EMGF could play, could play a role of an accredited carbon certifier. 
Well, the, actually, that's um, that, that's a great uh, point regarding like the, the connector, right? And how essentially the region is already connected. And uh, thanks a lot for, by, via, via EMGF, but also it could connect to other regions in a more efficient way. And I, I've heard you mentioning before, essentially, uh, Egypt as a ready-made solution, as a connector, a global connector for energy. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? I don't want to feel like uh, repeating myself, but, <laughs> but uh, it is a right question. And I think that there are more opportunities for... Uh, for everyone to uh, have this uh, ready-made solution uh, optimizing uh, different resources. Uh, when I was saying that, I, I meant really that we have all what it takes for facilitating as uh, logistics, as infrastructure for uh, neighboring countries. And I'm talking here about several things not necessarily only gas, but also for electricity and for renewable. I mean, this is, and for hydrogen. So this is the right place for uh, different kinds of energy. And uh, the proximity that we have together with all our East Mediterranean countries is obvious and is helping uh, in order to optimize uh, all the resources. Uh, we have good infrastructure, we have the LNG capacities, we have good uh, pipelines, networks, uh, we have uh, good uh, ports, jetties, uh, we have good areas for uh, identifying locations for uh, solar panels. We have also the best locations for wind over the Red Sea and uh, the western side of our north coast. So I think uh, we are very well uh, positioned for that. As we spoke earlier in another panel, we were talking about green hydrogen. And also there, with the Suez Canal uh, Authority, we have been able to identify potential uh, location for uh, putting uh, plants uh, for uh, developing uh, green ammonia and this will be done through the renewable that will be produced as we mentioned before so and electrolyzers will then be uh, put uh, at the shores whether on the Mediterranean to be closer uh, to uh, European countries or on the Red Sea and make the transmission so I think uh, with the talents and the capabilities and the skills and the manufacturing uh, capabilities that Egypt has got, uh, we are then very well uh, positioned to say that we are uh, a ready-made solution. Uh, the idea is that we need to be uh, uh, more seen, uh, we need more uh, outreach, we need to uh, uh, to be seen uh, uh, globally and that's one of the enablers that we had uh, as I was saying in my speech at the opening we had this vision of having the East Mediterranean Gas Forum and this was one of the enablers because we had seen that this is an opportunity a few years back and then it was this initiative in 2018 of uh, founding this uh, collaborative uh, organization among uh, producers, uh, consumers, and transient countries, and to enlarge the cooperation. Because I think, and this was uh, discussed before, and this is an important uh, part of how we can integrate the ready-made solution, by saying that this will, in its in a larger uh, uh, definition, will be and not only an East Mediterranean Gas Forum, but it will be an East Mediterranean uh, Energy Forum. And I think that ultimately uh, everybody will be able to uh, uh, benefit from uh, being part of this uh, hub. And so we've spoken quite a bit about collaboration between countries. Um, Minister Fayyad, like, could you talk a little bit about collaboration with the private sector? 
And if you can keep it short, so we like because we're running very close to the Wait time. Minutes, three. <laughs> Less. Less than three. <laughs> All right. Uh, in, I mean, as again, I have to refer to President Sisi this morning when he mentioned that one of the big barriers that we are facing as a global South is the story about financing and the hurdles and the complexity in assembling financing in order to go forward with our agendas for sustainability and growth and transition in the energy sector. And in that context, in Lebanon, the crisis is more severe than ever because we seem to be under a certain form of financial siege, financing siege. There is no financing available to the country. The, the sector, the banking sector is completely crippled and no one is yet solving it. At the same time, international financing is kind of prohibited still. Uh, we look to the private sector as a key partner to unlock this problem of uh, financing. And whether I look at the upstream energy sector in the gas exploration and production, indeed, or on the renewable front, on both fronts we need the private sector to invest the money that is needed. I would argue that we have the appropriate legal uh, framework uh, and also the appropriate commercial framework. If you look on the renewable energy, we just said on the commercial front, the prices are more than comfortable in order to justify bankable investments. And on the legal front, we have uh, promulgated the law on distributed renewable energy, allowing partners to now, private sector, to say we are ready to invest because this is bankable projects that we are talking about. Thankfully, in Lebanon, we've just had uh, a one big investor, CMA, CGM, that that has acquired two licenses for the uh, investment and uh, production of two power plants of 15 megawatts uh, each. And we are hoping that this will set the stage for a growth in that, in that sector in utility scale investments in renewable energy. On the, on the, on the other front, on the upstream uh, gas exploration front, we're looking for partners like you know, we have Total Energy and the consortium, but we're looking to many uh, other uh, partners if they can invest in the, in the upstream sector. The conditions are viable, and as you know, we have the sovereign, uh, sovereign uh, uh, wealth uh, uh, fund that have been promulgated as a law that allowing the proper channeling of the money to, to the government and to the people uh, and uh, um, you know, um, avoid any, any wastage in that in those proceeds. So there is a, you know, there is a, a, a proper stimulus and incentive uh, mechanisms in place to allow transparently for the private sector to participate. But you know the problem is the geopolitical uh, problem that we contend with at this stage. Any closing statement? So I think if, if we're talking about integration and collaboration, I think, I think this is one of the main objectives of the EMGF. How can we develop the resources through the collaboration of the different stakeholders, governments and companies? This is to build to what the ministers has been saying. Now, from my side, I would just like to urge uh, the private sector to to jump in uh, on a more uh, passionate way, and we are willing as uh, governments to help them either through the regulation or whatever is necessary. But uh, ultimately, when we talk about all this stuff, what we want to see at the end is projects, projects being materialized. And uh, this is on the hands of the private sector, but we are here, this is my message, we are here as governments to help and facilitate this effort. Well, thank you very much for that uh, great picture of how to shape a realistic and pragmatic energy future. Um, hopefully, all those projects will be highly investable in the next year and we'll see a different landscape coming up. Thank, thank you. you.